Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are well, you? Are we supposed to say good afternoon now? Oh, oh, I, I don't want to. I know. I, we always started with good morning. Good afternoon just feels so wrong. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's a, you know, good morning. We'll just stick with good morning. <laughs> Every day. 11 59. the times. Right? <laughs> So it's still morning. That's true. That's true. No, that would make me early if it were. Never mind. It's. I haven't had enough coffee yet to think about it. Well, normally we're we're making sure we're full of coffee by ten thirty, but here we are at noon. Oh, your mug! I love that mug. Um, naturally, <laughs> I broke out. I haven't used it since the last yeah, time of the year, which was about a month ago. <laughs> Special lattes mug. It yeah. is. It's my lattes with librarians mug. <laughs> but I'm so happy to be here today. I'm so excited to be here. Like, I know. Me too. It's I'm weird. Nervous. I know. Nervous. Yes. Like, we did this so often for so long that it was just like second nature. We'd hop on here and we'd chat. And I know. But it, I feel nervous today doing it for some reason. Yes. <laughs> uh, I also want to explain real quick we've got this Ooh. i haven't been on v live oh her comments featured do you see that i do i did okay. i got a haircut so we haven't we haven't um we haven't been on this website that we use to pr produce this produce is a very big word for what's happening right, right now yes, but, yeah, very um, we on here and um and there's a new feature about called comment assistant. And right now I see Liz's comment like in our box. In our box. Yeah. So that's what that is. That was not my choice. We'll just, <laughs> uh, we'll be playing with this as we go. Also, right. good morning, Liz. Hey, live seems to be the one choosing which comments are featured. And hello, yeah. Carrie. It says auto, automatically showcase. So <laughs> it's going to decide which comments are going to be posted. So we may turn this off next time. I don't know, but Liz says really? she's in the t same time zone as us for once, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. I probably wish she was in the same time zone when she was watching at 7.30 in the morning <laughs> before. Yeah. Um, she's in New York now, so that's cool. Nice. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to be here, but also I am nervous. It's been a long time. I feel like I've forgotten how to do this. I've forgotten everything. I feel very incapable this morning. So. Right. Um, and like I have like notes, like I've got like pages and pages of yeah. notes today, and I'm just like, what am I going to say? I know. <laughs> Did you see my email, Leo, about my notes? I emailed my notes to you because frequent viewers will know I typically don't get my notes together. I don't get my act together. I have chicken scratch that I can't read. And I was very excited that I actually, I did it beforehand. I'm going to, I printed it. It was a whole thing. And then I was very proud of myself and I tooted my own horn a whole lot in that email. And then I forgot to attach it, which was <laughs> embarrassing because I had to like reply to the email and be like, sorry, I forgot to attach it. And then it turns and out I had the wrong version anyway. So. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we all have those problems. It, it, it's really hard in the mornings to do, to do anything. anything right. so it's all good. Yeah, we've, got, we've got so many notes. We've got so many new books to talk about. That's the point. The point of today is to talk about all the new fall releases. So a lot of these we won't have read. It's not like, oh, this is what I'm reading or this is what I've read. It's going to be, this is what's coming out. This is what I'm excited about. This is what has all the holds on it, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, yes, Liz, we are, are nerds with our, with our notes, but yeah. I think that's kind of normal in our field to be a little bit nerdy. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think most of the people I work with could in some way be called a nerd. Yeah, and I don't think anybody wants me doing this show without notes. Already it probably feels as if I'm doing it without notes. And that's this is best case scenario. So I think <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, did you want to share what you're currently reading though? Just um I just finished Voyager by um Diana Gabaldon. Um, mm -hmm. I'm rereading the the Outlander mm -hmm. series, right. and I'm, I don't know. Like I got through um, um, book number two pretty quickly. Like that one went went fast. Yeah. Book three, for some reason, like took forever to get through. Book three is like mm -hmm. massive, though. I think it's the longest one. Yeah. Um, so it it it. 
it was hard to to get through, which is weird because you know. I, well, I, yeah. I, so it's just so much happens. So are you are you gonna um? Do you think you're gonna make it? Oh no, I'm not gonna make it. Oh, not by the time. Ah, oh, bummer. Not if I'm not if I keep going at this rate. And Lily agrees, it is a very long book. So um, so it might just be that it's um longer than the others and it, it just mm -hmm. takes me a while but yeah. yeah i don't think i'm going to be prepared for november 23rd when <laughs> go tell the end of the year. comes out so yes and you know surprisingly i don't even have my cell phone hold for that one yet um, um i'm kind of at the point where i think i might buy a copy because mm -hmm. like that's a series that i really like and i really like going back to um Lily's three fourths of the way through book six, so she's much further along than I am. And it gets to the point where I, I have to double check myself because I don't even remember which one comes which, which oh, no. one comes next after a certain point because yeah. I just I went through them one right after the next, mm -hmm. and it all just kind of melded yeah. into one story after a yeah. little while. So, but yeah, I'm very excited for November twenty third. Go tell the beat bees that i'm gone diana gabaldon's um yes nine nine and you'll be reading it maybe like in january right yeah yeah because yeah. maybe we can do this again for books that are coming out in the new year and maybe you can tell us about it then yes <laughs> well i am reading i've been reading some stuff because this is what i do i get wrapped up in these advanced ebooks um advanced copies of of books in e format uh and so i've been reading some things that are not coming out yet but the other thing that i am listening to is i finally did start listening to the invisible life of addie larue i'm only like 45 minutes into it or something and i do have a question for you that i'm just going to ask you on here it's not um not a spoiler this happens in the first you know i imagine few pages um so, and, and it's part of the plot of the book that people forget her, right? They meet her and then they forget mm -hmm. her. Um, right. In the first few pages of the book, she goes into a clothing store, tries on some clothes in the fitting room and then walks out in them and she doesn't pay for them because the woman has like forgotten she was in the right. fitting room or whatever. My question is what happens when, do they address what happens if she's caught on camera? Um, yes, like okay. it's, it's very hard to capture her. Like like she's like a blur like it's always like okay. she's in movement or against the side of her face like she never shows okay. up well in picture okay. there's, there's okay. never like a clear picture of her somehow because gotcha. my i didn't under, i mean it seems like that woman would just go check the security footage because she when she goes find and find someone else's clothes in there and be like oh shoot i forgot who was in there let's check the security camera and then it would just be security camera footage of that woman and then that would be that that, that would be that she would know who it was but i wasn't sure Okay. Yeah, it's like because they it's 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 weird because the same is not true for paintings, mm. but um, although even in paintings, a lot of times it's I don't gotcha. think it's full on. Okay. Uh, frontal view of her yeah. face, but like anytime someone tries to take her pictures, it's like she's okay, away or it's like she's moving, so it ends up as a blur. Probably the security camera footage would be un usable then it sounds like okay cool thank you because i that happens not very far into it and i spent ever since that moment happening happened thinking about what would, why the woman didn't just check the security footage and how that would play out so now i can relax and continue to enjoy it hello Hi, andrea and it's funny that um liz's comment is still being featured well i know and i don't think i can do anything about that now My <laughs> only i know it's just it's, it's funny that that's what's on the I know the, our, our entire presentation was going to say OMG haircut. Um, <laughs> instead of lattes with librarians, Liz has hijacked it. I'm going to see if I. Nope, it's going to be there no matter what. All right. <laughs> it, it, technology, you got to love it. It's constantly changing mm -hmm. on you, and you never, ever know what's going to happen. No, and it does say we're experiencing the beta version of this as well. So <laughs> anyway, do you want to get into the books? Yeah, there's so much coming out. It, we've hit that time of year where it's just like great new book, great new book, great new book. They throw them at you all fall mm -hmm. until like right before Christmas. And it's just, yeah. yeah. And everyone gets to take a holiday break. 
Yeah, <laughs> so they can read. <laughs> Well, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Yeah, indeed. Always hijacking. Um, I, uh, I I will start. Um, okay. I haven't read it yet, but I keep hearing about it and it keeps showing up on all these like to be read lists. Mm -hmm. The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. Tolls? Oh, you've got it there. Sorry, I should probably let you talk about it since have you no, started? No, that's okay. This was, um, I loved A Gentleman in Moscow. That's one of my most recent favorite books like in the past few years that I've read. Um, I read it over winter time and it was just like, it was a really great reading experience, A Gentleman in Moscow was. And so The Lincoln Highway, I was very excited to hear he had, I saw an interview with the author and A Gentleman in Moscow takes place um, in Russia over the course of essentially a whole man's lifetime or the bulk of his adult life where he is um, sentenced to spend his life in this hotel um, by the government um, as a punishment for something he did during the Russian Revolution as far as I understand, as far as I remember. And it's very short at the beginning. And so then it, his life plays out as he lives in this hotel. And so I saw an interview with the author of the book where he said they were asking something about writing a book about, um, this is about a cross country trip. And yeah. they asked him some specifics about that. And he said, honestly, it wasn't, I just had to write anything that wasn't as confined as the last book that I wrote because that took place in one hotel that he, that, I, that was the only landscape I had to work with. So I think I was just really eager to spread out. And um, so it takes place over the course of 10 days. So even though the, the geography is large, the time frame is small. Yeah, um, I thought that was interesting because it was like yeah. the opposite of the other book. Yeah. Yes. And so that drew me in. And um, essentially, it is. Where did it go? Um, yeah, so basically a man's driving across the country um, after being released from like this Juvenile detention prison. program um, mid-century. And then he finds out that two of his people from that program have like stowed away in his car. I honestly don't even really know what the rest of it is. I just knew that I was really going to want to read it, hopefully really like it. Um, and so... Truth be told, I purchased this. I've never, I've, I, I don't know that I've ever paid this much money for a book before because I never buy a new hardback copy of anything. <laughs> but I bought it from an independent bookstore, so I was like, you know, doing, doing my part I that way. Yeah, and I knew I'd be excited to read it, so I just got that, and um, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, since you yeah, saw the book, I know I did. I'll go ahead and talk about another one that I keep seeing like mm -hmm. everywhere. Elizabeth Strout, her new book, Oh, William. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, about a writer who is talking about her ex-husband, William. Like, I don't really know ev everything that it's about because, you know, I haven't read it yet. But um, she's a writer and it's kind of like she she's good at reading people she writes people like you know she's good at motivations and whatnot except for her except for william like he has remained a mystery to her and that she thinks may have been the key to their marriage <laughs> right and, um he asked her to join her to go it, some family secret is uncovered and he asked her to join her and like all this stuff gets revealed and it's just it sounds really interesting yeah. um and Elizabeth Strout is just mm -hmm. wonderful. Her her writing is just beautiful. So mm -hmm. of course, I know. Be I wonderful. love. She's on. That's on my list as well. She is um, the author of all of Kittredge, which I really really liked. Um, yeah, her writing is beautiful. I haven't read everything by her in part because like there's a finite amount, and I just want to like yeah. make sure I always have one to read. Um, and this is, even though it stands on its own, it's technically like a prequel of sorts to her, my name is Lucy Barton, because Lucy, I think William Lucy is Barton. Barton's first yeah. husband. So yes. if you've read My Name is Lucy Barton, um, you can read either independently, but that's the same, going to be the same character. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know, I can't. That one comes out 1019. Um, Ooh, that's, that's, not, that's not far from now. No, and the Lincoln has- It's also Lily's anniversary, so. Oh, really? 
<laughs> maybe, maybe this maybe this book about a failed relationship would be a great gift. No, sorry, I just the date. It just yeah, you know, it's like, well, <laughs> well, while we're talking about like kind of heavy hitting authors, I have to bring up. I can't remember if I talked about this in August or not. If I did, I'm doing it again. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. Uh, he won the Pulitzer Prize and probably many other prizes for All the Light We Cannot See, which I have not read. Um, but I read Cloud Cuckoo Land as an advanced copy and it was so, 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 so good. I loved it so much. Um, and he just was uh, nominated for the National Book Award for this book. Um, and it is set over uh, several, I think five, four or five time periods. It's set in Constantinople in the 15th century, present day Idaho, um, mid-century Idaho, and I guess four, and then like uh, the distant future on a spaceship. And so um, in this text, Cloud Cuckoo Land, which is um, based on a real like Greek play, but it's actually something that Anthony Doerr also made up, um, that the text of that threads throughout and it's kind of, the book is kind of about being a steward of our stories, but also being a steward of the earth and the environment. Um, and so there's these five characters through four different time periods that you're following. And the chapters are very, very short, which I saw an interview with him. And he said, if you're going to be doing a story with so many characters, so many plot lines, so many time periods, the least that you can do for the reader is visually arrange it in a way that makes it easier to get through and easier that you're, you're just going to chunk off like little bits. Like, this is all I have to remember from this part. This is all I have to remember from this part. And so the format of the book, there's a lot of divisions. There'll be like a fragment of that play and then there'll be like a short chapter and then you move to the next place. And apparently that was intentional on his part, even the formatting of it, he wanted it to be as easy as possible and as not overwhelming as possible. But anyway, I very much recommend this book. I really liked it. I think a lot of different audiences would appreciate it. Um, yeah. And I like, I like, I like that he did that on purpose. Like make it easy. a little bit. Of that. Know. He That's knows he's, <laughs> He's aware he wrote a 600 plus page book. And so he's going to do what he can to encourage people to be able to read it. Yes. Because a lot of really big books have really long chapters. So. They do and small print sometimes. And you just yeah. feel discouraged. You're like, I'm never going to get to the end of this chapter. There's no easy breaking off point. But if you look ahead and it's only four pages, you're like, well, I'll read this section. I'll read this section. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did when I was reading. You know it. Like you're like, oh, I can do a net that little bit. So right. So all right, what's up next? Um. Well, how about um? Oh, the news came out this year that um, Lee Child is retiring, mm -hmm. and he's not going to be writing anymore but he's passing the jack reacher mantle on to his brother um mm -hmm. andrew well this fall they have a joint book coming out okay it's lee child and andrew child writing um better off dead so it's the next jack mm -hmm. reacher story so you know good well a good thing day, but right. <laughs> it's like the two of them writing it together before he passes um Orch. The yes, the torch. So in the name, because I, this was a big relief to me when I first read about this. His actual last name, definitely Andrews, and maybe even the main author's, is not Child. And Andrews going to write right. as yes. Child. Yes. Um, which means we get to keep the same name on the spine, and it's going to be accurate and match the match what's on the title page. No shelver will be confused. No patron will be confused. No cataloger will be confused. I know because I was like, your name is Andrew Grant. That's not, that's, that's Grant. I think it was Grant. That made, I don't remember, but probably, yeah, it just, but he's not going to use it on the book. Right, yes, Thank he's you. writing as a child instead of um, his, with a real last okay. name, because well, obviously it's probably not Lee's last name either if they're brothers, so. I, know, I, do, I don't think it is, and so yeah. um, I'm relieved, yeah. I'm relieved that someone understand, appreciates consistency, which, okay, we've been on this soapbox before, we can move on. <laughs> But where yeah. it is on the shelf just makes it so much easier if the story nice. stays together. Because like Tom Clancy's don't. Where do they end up now? Like, is he? Is that Mark? Yes, green, green, green. Mark somebody. Green something. 
I don't know, but yeah. And, and G. So you have How to make names start with a G, and I can't remember them. I think it's like Grainy or something. G R E A N E Y. Right. Yeah. Something. Yeah, and so but anyway, it doesn't. It doesn't anyway. matter. We've done it before. Um, another big book when you're talking about news. Um, this one's already out. It came out in September, but um. I think it would be impossible to have not seen the cover for Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. That was just promoted extremely heavily. I actually printed out the cover here uh, in case someone thinks, oh, I haven't seen it. Well, you might have when you see it. Um, this was like had a gigantic marketing campaign, campaign, a huge marketing campaign. Really the interesting thing about that is that people were selling. They, they gave not only did they send out print. Uh, advanced readers copies to people, which many books do. Um, but they also sent out like swag that you normally do not get with a book. They sent out like tote bags, they had hats, they had a variety of things that they sent out to um, like literary critics and really big, I think big book influencers and the, you know, some celebrities, Lena Dunham got one, I think. And it's like, like they see swag bags, but when they first started sending those out, um, Things were showing up on eBay for sale, including the arcs themselves, the, the copies of the books themselves. One sold on eBay for over $200. And the thing about arcs is that they're not for resale. Like they say that all over it. And there's, you know, it's just never has been that big of an in, yeah. in like, industry. Like, we just, we, we try to get rid of them. I'm like, take it. It's right. they're just piling up. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but this, because there was this exclusivity around, I think, and part of it was that swag and just people showing off that they got one, like on social media and stuff, people wanted to buy them. And so then I hope that that does not become the trend where they have to like heavily police yeah. the issuing arcs because it's just. That is, you know. yeah. And so that was then, then they won't like release stuff to people. And I know. Well, you need reviewers to review it. So we, right, yeah, and you need us here to talk about things that have come out, and and us seeing them helps us talk about them too. But you were talking about reviewers, and um, mm -hmm. this one I saw one of the book talkers, book mm -hmm. TikTok, book talk, book. You know, she's on yes. TikTok and she reviews books, like right. <laughs> Because you said book talkers, and that just sounds weird. It um, does, yes. <laughs> but one of the people I follow on TikTok who reviews books, she got a, a gift package from the publisher of The X Hex. Oh, I have that one written down too. Candles, like she got all kinds of cool stuff and stickers and. Oh um, my gosh! But yeah, so the X Hex, it's very witchy and it looks really fun and cute. Um, yes. And. Uh, so there's this woman, she's a little bit witchy and she curses her horrible boyfriend. And um, years later, it turns out that maybe the little curse she put on him is not quite as little as she thought. And um, now <laughs> um, the things are going horrible in town. Um, let's see what appears. Uh, uh, a talking cat with some interesting to say, a pissed off goat, um, murderous wind up toys. Like it just, it sounds like it's going to be funny. Um, yeah. And they have to work together to break the hex while, um, you know, maybe falling back in love. One, one can only. <laughs> also, I, I, I recently learned about this book is that Aaron Sterling is actually Rachel Hawkins, who is, um, so Aaron Sterling is a pseudonym for Rachel Hawkins, who wrote The Wife Upstairs, which I did not like at all and thought was bad, but that's okay. It was, a, it was a, in my opinion, a really different type of book. Yeah. Mediocre thriller. But she has another one coming out in, called Reckless Girls, and it's coming out in January. And I just had no idea that they were the same person. And even on the back, it says she's not pretending or anything, but I just yeah. had no idea. And I so she also writes idea. YA. She writes young adult stuff. She wrote the X Hex, and I don't know how much other romance or if this is her first romance. And then she writes these thrillers. And the reason why I thought that Wife Upstairs was mediocre was just because it was based on Jane Eyre. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was expecting more. I was expecting, like, I just thought it was going to be more atmospheric and stuff. And if you already know the plot of Jane Eyre, you can't rely on the plot to like make your thriller exciting because a lot of people who are reading this book have probably also read Jane Eyre and but whatever it's fine. So anyway, Rachel Hawkins <laughs> is also the author of the X Hex. I had and no I do have that written down. Person. 
you know, I kind of like that when an author uses, if they're going to use, if they're going to write in different genres, mm -hmm. use different names. I like yeah. that because then you don't have people being like, where are your, right. where are your, your Danielle Steele books? Well, some yeah. of them are in fiction because they're just fiction and mm -hmm. some of them are a romance because most of them are romance. So that, I like yeah. that, that they use different names to. I do too. So like, I do too. Amanda Quick. Mm -hmm. or, or she writes more of um well she still writes as amanda quick she also writes mm -hmm. as jane mancastle and yeah um, uh jane what's the other one i don't know Krantz, jane ann Krantz. Yeah. Oh, okay she i didn't know, know that of them. and like they they're i didn't know amanda stories. Krantz was jane ann Krantz. i did not mm -hmm. realize that yeah okay cool That's something new <laughs> Yeah, but that is nice. And I remember I saw a thing with Rachel Hawkins where, you know, she said it's a, there's a it's a difficult decision to make because you ha if you've built a following as one author, you have to start all over again, like under this other name. But so that's an advantage to revealing your identity. They're not doing it to try to hide who they are. They're just more like you're saying for them, it works well to have people follow this persona versus this persona and then they can market to their audience rather than having to market to everyone and say, oh no, but you won't like this one because this is my romance, but you know. Like, um, Nora Roberts, her mysteries are J.D. Robb. Like so she's got like that distinction, but yeah. she's not hiding it. It's right. Nora Roberts as J.D. Robb, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> so. Yes, I like it when they make things convenient for us. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, another book that, another romance that um, I think I've seen promoted, maybe not as much probably as the X-Hex, but um, all the feels by Olivia Dade, um, because yeah. <laughs> yes, because uh, it's and it's a it's one of those romance series that we talked about where it's not you can read either of them, but they're a connected set of characters. Mm -hmm. So the first one was called Spoiler Alert, and now this second one is called All the Feels, and it follows secondary characters from Spoiler Alert. The main the male main character is um, an actor on a, it's called God of the Gates, but it's basically, it's like a Game of Thrones style show. It's based on this epic series of books that then got turned into a TV show. And um, his character was like kind of done dirty by the writers. Like they, he ended up being really lame and it just his storyline differed from the book in a way that he was really disappointed by because he writes no, he doesn't. And the other one, the other guy wrote fan fiction. He doesn't write fan fiction, but part of it has to do too with the fan fiction community. That's what sort of spoiler alert was about. And they just want a better future for the characters they portray on the show. Um, and this is a very uh, like body inclusive type of romance. Mm -hmm. um, and so he basically has a handler. He has a woman who's like trying to keep him in check until the show ends because he's gonna go off the handle and uh, he has gone off the handle before and, you know, she may find him annoying and irritating at first, but I'm that guessing. Hate to love trope, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the main character, Lauren, is improbably short, impossibly stubborn, and extremely endearing. <laughs> you gotta love that description. Yeah, so. Um, since we're talking about uh, romances, I'm going to go ahead and pop in with one. Yeah. Um, it's called The Charm Offensive by uh, mm -hmm. Alison Co Cochran. Um, it is, it says, reminiscent of Red, White, and Royal Blue and One to Watch. Oh, ooh, did you hear that Red, White, and Royal Blue um, is going to be made into a movie? I did not, no. I still yes, haven't read I love it. that book. Yeah. Well, Oh, I yes. just, I still haven't read it, but I do, I, I know it's really good. I just haven't read it. Yes, it's, um, they're making that one into a movie. So I'm very excited to see how that turns out. But, yeah. um, so anyway, back to the charm offense <laughs> um, by Alison Cochran. Um, it's, it's set on like a, a, uh, a dating show. And the, the person who is like the bachelor type person is um, this, nerdy tech wonderkin kind of guy like he's and he's not doing well on camera at all mm -hmm. <laughs> so like the the producer is like working with him trying to like draw him out and make him more um you know 
appealing to people because who wants to be with him? Um, but so then the two of them maybe fall in love. So right. Yes. Is a problem for the show. Uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm interested to see how they work out that uh, snap snap right. story. So, but lots yes. of behind the scenes scenes on the dating show kind of stuff and. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to reading yeah. that and figuring out how they solved that problem. And Liz agrees that red, white, and royal blue was really cute. I, and I, her, just, I really liked it. It just, yeah. And her comment was featured again. Yes, only Liz gets now, featured. Now we're placed over the hair with red, white, and royal blue was really cute, which is fine. That's good. Yeah, I do want to read that. I have another romance. This one um, is called The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. It came out the end of September. Um, and it is about Rachel Rubenstein Goldblatt, who is a nice Jewish girl with a shameful secret. And her secret is that she not only loves Christmas, but she writes Christmas romance novels under a pen name, oh. even though she's like the rabbi's daughter. And, um, oh no, now Andrea is very jealous. Why not her? <laughs> Why not my? <laughs> Apparently they're too long. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh, it's scrolling now. Ooh, this is fancy. <laughs> It'd be easier if we knew how to control it. Um, <laughs> so the Matzo Ball, um, her public, okay, so she writes these Christmas-themed romances that have actually been turned into a ton of Hallmark movies. And so she has, like, this secret room in her apartment where she has, like, all her... <laughs> where she has all her um, movie posters for the Hallmark movies from her books. And she also has um, a chronic illness, which is an interesting component to it. So that's part of why she, she really appreciates the writing that she's able to do and the type of writing she's able to do because she can work from home. And so um, her publisher wants to kind of diversify the range of offerings they have and they want her to write a Hanukkah themed romance. And she's like, I wanna write a Hanukkah themed romance. Hanukkah is not magical, Christmas is magical. So she has to reconnect with an old flame to try to get tickets to this giant matzo ball. And it's this Hanukkah party, um, this glitzy Hanukkah party and throughout she will I imagine find the magic of Hanukkah and then also um the magic of her old flame um and she probably will have to reveal her true self to her friends and family and you know see if her family still accepts her for writing Christmas things I read part of this and I will tell you it is very hallmarky and so that will mean to you what it means I we've had our show I do love a good hallmark movie but I don't really like reading a hallmark movie like it was just it it's very you know at christmas time i really want a hallmark movie i know yeah. it's all predictable and cheesy right and i yeah. i can deliver the lines in my sleep but you know, right. you know what at christmas time that's what i want yeah so um, i had to stop myself i put two christmas books on my list and i was like if i don't stop right now yeah it's, it's all going to be christmas books it's all yeah. So well, this one is a very gentle read, and um, just like hallmarky in that in that way of like it's it's pretty contrived. Um, but again, in a hallmark movie, that's fine. If they made this into a hallmark movie, I'd watch it. But I just had to put it down. I wasn't really. It, it was a little too much of that for me. But mm -hmm. that's not a judgment in any way. I just it's not. We all know you're a book snob. It's okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. It's a bit, but that's yes. But, so, but I will. I'll, so I'm going to jump in with one of the holiday books that I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep saying looking forward to. Some of these books may have already been published. I wasn't really. Um, I didn't write down dates this yeah. time. So, I don't yeah. Know. I mean, a lot of this stuff has been coming out either like late September or into October. Or so mm -hmm. it all kinds of gets muddled for me. Yeah. Most of this stuff I ordered month, months ago. So, right. Um, but uh, the holiday swap by Maggie Knox. Um, <laughs> there, there are these two identical twins. They have very, very different lives. One is like a celebrity. Um, she's like a judge on a, on a baking show. Um, and the other one is, um, you know, a wife and mother. No, she's divorced. Um, so she's like 
uh, doing the single mom thing and, mm -hmm. you know, just busy, hectic life. And, um, <clears throat> and both of them, what they want for Christmas is a different life. So the one um, on the baking show uh, gets injured and loses her taste of smell and her sense of taste and her sense of smell, which if you're a judge on a mm -hmm. show, that's, that, that's not good. Right. Um, and it's one of those things that they think will be okay. Like, but so <laughs> she's like, um, can we do the switcheroo that we used to do when we were kids? And <laughs> they do. And um, hilarity ensues, I'm sure. So I'm sure. I'm, you know, how can you not have a twin swap and not have really? a twin swap? So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what happens there, but it looks like both of them have new romances in their life and how do they get out of these entanglements? Right. Yes. Yeah, so it's awesome. I like a tricky entanglement to my love story. <laughs> well, I don't want to overwhelm us with romance, but I do have a couple others that I feel like just sort of, um, when you were talking about the baking show, I have, Donut Fall in Love <laughs> by Jackie Lau. It comes out the end of October. And uh, there's a an actor named Ryan who is um, has just been in a rom-com that's getting not great reviews. And so he's going to try to like boost his reputation a little bit um, when he gets offered a role on like this celebrity baking fail type of show where you got to bake some stuff and it's all celebrities on it. And he ends up um, literally running into a baker and knocks her specialty donuts everywhere. And um, <laughs> but there's an immediate attraction and he ends up asking her to help him practice baking for this celebrity baking show that he's going to be on. And uh, sparks, sparks do fly. Um, and I haven't read that one, but um, I do think that that's another one that's a little bit like on the tamer side, you know, the the gentler. I don't know. I don't know what to call it, the more hallmarky side of yeah romance. They're both like grieving a parent, and you know, kind of come together in that way. And it actually, just reminded me. I don't know when this book comes out, but I saw a cover. It was called A Brush with Love, and there was like this swipe of like color on the cover and I thought it was going to be like artists or whatever when I clicked on it. It's about dental students and it was toothpaste. <laughs> so, and there was some excellent wordplay in that description, but it was a while ago and I didn't write it down for this. I don't know when it comes out, but anyway, a brush with love. They're both dental. How students. have I not seen that one anywhere? It's not, I, I don't know. You're going to have to like send me a link to it. So I, I will send you a link to that. Yeah. So. <laughs> You could, you said you had another one you wanted to. to um, I'll do one more. Yeah, I'll do one more romance. Um, this one, I don't know. I don't know if this is one we're gonna buy. Like, I this is, I don't know if this is one that's in our catalog. It's just one I saw the title of and I could not help myself. It's called How to K Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days. Um, well, I think we definitely need to buy that one right? by KM Jackson. It comes out in November. Um, it's a hilarious road trip rom com, perfect for fans of Meet Cute um, and When Harry Met Sally. So, the main character, Bethany Lou Carlisle, is devastated when the tabloids report that actor Keanu Reeves is about to tie the knot. Um, and she's just devastated. And so, she's desperate to convince him to call off the, we the wedding. So, she and her best friend take a wild road trip to search for the elusive Keanu so that Lou can fill her dream of meeting her forever crush and confess her undying love. Um, I think she, her BFF may be who she ends up falling in love with by the end, because it says maybe she'll discover true love has been by her side all along. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, if Keanu Reeves is the other option, but he's a vampire and, um, never ages. And so that might be hard. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And I mean, I feel like there's a lot of escapism in romance novels, but I feel like it's another taking it to another level when you have the main character actually meeting and winning over a real life actor. There's yeah. fake actors all the time modeled on real actors. <laughs> but I, I think like the real actor kind of makes it funnier in a way mm -hmm. because you know, like yeah. imagine actually being like, I'm going to stop this wedding. And then right. 
managing to meet Keanu Reeves. You can like just, just that them. idea is just like how do you make that work? You know. So I know. I kind of like it when they tie in other things yeah. that you have referenced. Yeah, I, I yeah, we're kind of like how do you make that work? And also tell me more so I can figure out. How to make that work. <laughs> but um, Liz is demanding that you figure out and update mm -hmm. in the comments after the show more on that uh, dental love dental. story because dental romance is a subgenre she did not know she needed in her life. You don't know it till you see it and then you start reading right. the puns and you're like, yeah, so I agree actually. I will, I will include that. I will. <laughs> We will have to find that information yeah. for you, Liz. Do you have another Christmas title? Um, you know, I. I I'm I sorry, I'm going to interrupt because Liz is wondering. Do you think Keanu will read it? And I don't know if she means just read it, read it. But I want him to read the audiobook. What if there was an audiobook version <gasps> that Keanu Reeves read? Right. Oh my God, that would be amazing. I don't know if he's ever read yeah. an audiobook. I can't really imagine the I, ring that, that would have. <laughs> No, I, I I don't I don't think I've I know of one that he's read. Although that would be awesome. So yes, that's a good I, idea. I think he yeah, is. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> um, you know I I do have another. I just I'm just going to say Debbie Maycomer has another Christmas yeah. book coming out. She does yeah. Christmas stories all the time. This one's called Dear Santa, but um, I'm going to skip that one because this one I just downloaded and I'm going to listen to. And of course, this is probably also part of the reason that I haven't gotten through the Outlander series because I keep um, going to other yeah. books. And Liz says we need to start a petition. Yes, I definitely think yes. there needs to be a petition. What is it? What? Where was that place you go? Yeah, um, one of the online, yeah. Yes, the online petition to get Keanu Reeves to read it. Yes. <laughs> but, um, I just downloaded this book and um, I can't wait to listen to it. It's Lisa Unger is the author. Last Girl Ghosted. It's more of like a thriller, mystery type suspense book. Um, she it says, think twice before you swipe. She meets this guy through a dating app and like what is supposed to be just like this casual thing ends up being like, ooh, you know, turns into a real romance and they have like this whole relationship and then he just disappears. Um, yeah. He stands her up and when she goes, his profile's gone, like his phone's disconnected, like he just is gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, first she thinks like maybe she did something mm -hmm. and then she's like, um, then she learns about other, other women who were like, Mm -hmm. the same thing happened to them and then they go missing maybe so then like like she's tracking him is he tracking her it's like who's hunter who's prey right yeah, it's very, yeah. Like, so I'm, yeah. I'm very very anxious to see how that one turns out and i really like this younger i think her stuff okay i've that. never read anything by her but i think that i just hearted that on hoopla the other day <laughs> You're yes, it is on Hoopla, so no waiting if you're interested. Right. Go download it now. But I ended up downloading Invisible Life of Addie LaRue instead, which is also available on Hoopla with no Much wait. better choice. Yeah. So. I also saw that um, the Outlander books are also on Hoopla now. They were not before, but they are now, so Ooh. no waiting on those either. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And another just backing backtracking to Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I love how um, Julia Whalen, the narrator, can speak French so well. So that really like she can give the proper accents to things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I already like her as a narrator, but that yes. I just kind of assumed it was correct since I don't speak French, but oh, yes, I don't speak French either, either, but like she clearly <laughs> It sounds comfortable coming. Yes, yeah, you can give her like that slight accent that I feel like you couldn't do if you didn't, if you weren't better at French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I could only probably do like a Pepe Le Pew accent and no, no accent at all. <laughs> um, and I, Debbie Maycomer, maybe every other month. Yes, she's not as prolific as James Patterson. Or Danielle Steele. Danielle Steele yeah, she does have quite a bit of an every month type of writer but also Joyce Meyer but we won't get into that <laughs> um okay so I'm torn between what I talk about next 
Um, I think I would, because we were mentioning um, audiobooks and celebrity narrated audio, I just wanted to mention yeah. that this week, um, Stanley Tucci's food memoir came out. It's called Taste My Life Through Food. And um, he grew up in an Italian American family. So he's talking about his um, upbringing in his family and also about the food, different like food films he's been in, things like Julie and Julia and Big Night. Um, and just about cooking. He also, if you may, you may or may not be aware, has like this cooking travel cooking show on CNN. Um, and so it's kind of like boosted out of that where he's traveling through Italy and tasting pasta and doing whatever. Um, and so there's an audiobook version of that narrated by Stanley Tucci. So throwing that out there, it's not super long. Um, and I don't know if there's an audiobook version of this, but just if we're talking about celebrity biographies, there's also one that just came out called Yours Cruelly, Elvira. And it's a biography <laughs> of Mistress, Mistress of the Night or Mistress of the Dark. Darker Night. Dark? Any, I don't, I don't in any case, um, and so she has had just probably as storied of a life as you might imagine Elvira would have. Um, and I, again, I don't know if there's an audiobook version of that or not. I imagine there will be at some point if there isn't now, but um, that was a fun one to page through the photos on the, in the inside. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of audiobooks, um, this is one that I definitely think the audiobook is going to be better. Mm -hmm. Storyteller Tales of Life and Music by Dave Grohl. Mm -hmm. um, he, because I've read that the audiobook includes um, mm -hmm. um, a couple of like songs that haven't been released, like stuff that he's. Oh, written. okay. Um, so you get you get previews of some music in in that the is cool. So. Yay. I believe he narrates it himself, but you know, he talks about his life, um, Nirvana, mm -hmm. uh, Food Fighters, jamming with Iggy Pop, uh, you know, it's just like his yeah. friendship with Paul McCartney. Uh, uh, you know, it's just like it just goes on and on. And it sounds like it's really, really going to be good. That's cool. And, That's cool to have that added to the um have those extras added to the audiobook. Yes. I and like when audiobooks do that, you know, it's like you get something special. If you right. Because you never have pictures in the audiobook. So, you, I mean, so right. a lot of times on the disc, you would get PDF, but if you're listening to the e version, you just, I don't know, it's not really included. So, that's awesome that you get some extra features. And Andrea's yeah. talking up the Stanley Tucci uh, book. She says she's listening to it and the narration is delightful and she's laughed out loud several times. So, that's good to hear. Thank you. I will say, like, this fall is chock full of biographies. Like, like so many um, mm -hmm. biographies are coming out. This, well, yeah, Will Smith has one. Um, Foster Sutton has one. Ron Howard and his brother, Clint Howard, have a joint one. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. Um, David Sedaris has one, St the Stanley Tucci. Mm -hmm. um, and and the one that I'm sure everyone well oh Renegades born in the USA is Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen have a book coming out but the one that everyone is waiting for on the edge of their seat Joe Exotic oh Joe Exotic has written Tiger King the official tell all memoir so back to the early days of the pandemic does everyone remember Joe Exotic oh yeah. I absolutely, I was pretty wrapped up in that. I think I watched it basically all in one sitting and texted people throughout. <laughs> I was like, you have to watch this thing. I, 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 I actually watched it twice. My mother and I, I think, watched it in one sitting. And then yeah. I was like, Carrie, you've got to watch this. Yeah. So my girlfriend and I watched yes. it again. And it was just, well, I watched it again with her. But it was yeah. just like, yes. He has written a tell-all, and I am so excited. But it's Joe Exotic, so when he's telling all what's true and what's not, it'll be very exciting. Yes, so it's going to be. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And Andrea says, and Liz agrees, that perhaps all the memoirs are a result of the pandemic because everyone was at home with nothing to do, so they just wrote books about themselves. <laughs> Right. Yes. Like this is a time for reflection and right. money a different way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for that update because I did not know that I did not know about Joe Exotic's biography. 
Yes. Um, the biography on my list that I put at the very end of my list, so because I thought maybe some people wouldn't even make it here, but um, the biography that I was so excited about, um, it actually came out in August, but there was never occasion to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Make It Nice by one of the New York housewives, Dorinda Medley. And Dorinda was not on this most recent season, and I will say it suffered. Um, but she <laughs> she was getting burned out. Things weren't going well, so she was not on this most recent season. So she wrote about... Um, she takes fans inside her roller coaster life and her iconic bluestone manor because she has this uh, house in the Berkshires. Um, and so she, it's just a memoir situation or whatever. But uh, Dorinda Medley's Make It Nice. So that's my celebrity, <laughs> my guilty pleasure celebrity biography that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I can't even think, but because I know there are a few more mm -hmm. celebrity biographies coming out and I, yeah, I can see the list because I scrolled through it the other day. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, but there are several yeah. more coming out that I. I'm trying to remember who else I've done recently. Um, who else I've put that B, B on the spine of, and then tried to fit their last name on one line. Um, and I, I'm sure I, I know we've had more too. I don't remember. It's just it, it. This fall is full of biographies. So if you're a biography fan. They're coming. Yeah, especially celebrity biographies. Yeah. Um, so since it is fall, I'm going to transition into, I'm sorry if this messes us up, but I was going to transition into like horror, suspense, thrillers. Okay. You know, because it is fall and time for scary things. Um, one I really wanted to mention, this is like psychological suspense, I would say. Um and it is called The Last House on Needless Street. And the author is Catriona Ward. Came out at the end of September. And I have read this. And um, it is weird. I almost didn't read it. I was I started it. I read a few chapters. And I was like, this might be too weird for me. But I, the reviews that I read of it, like people really liked it. So I was like, well, I'm going to keep going. And I kind of got into the rhythm of it. And um, I'm really glad I did because I really, really liked it. It has... Um, Chapters narrated by a teenage girl, chapters narrated by um, a man who lives alone who has these gaps in his memory, and chapters narrated by a house cat. And the ones that are narrated by the cat were like the, the weirdest to me. I was like, I can't, what's happening? Um, but it, once you kind of get into that groove, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely creepy. It's definitely disturbing. It's psychological suspense for sure. You're shocked and, you know, don't know till the end what's really going on. You have guesses, um, some of which are probably right, some of which are probably wrong. Um, but essentially, it's just in a boarded up house on a dead end street, there's a family that the three narrators and an unspeakable secret binds them together. Um, someone moves in next door and they may uncover the secret that haunts them. We'll leave it there. Um, but it's it was really good and compelling. and I felt like really woven together well. Liz wants to know if it was meowing, and no, it was not just a chapter of meows. Um, I definitely would have stopped reading then. Uh, no, the cat's very eloquent, and he does this thing where he like knocks the Bible off the table and like reads a passage, and then that passage, like, then he like expounds on that. It was a lot, but once you once you absorb it and you understand what it's going to be, it's not as overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> well, going with the fall, yeah, thing, um, the book of magic by Alice Hoffman. Mm -hmm. um, is out it, it is the fourth and final book in like the practical magic series okay um it's you know the owens family they they have that curse um it's over 300 years old um when people fall in love and we saw that in practical magic the movie at least um but so one of the um aunts hears the death watch beetle and knows that she's going to die in seven days but um, she's not the only one who's in danger. So like she, there's like this big hullabaloo as they come together to break the curse and save this other person. And it just is, um, it's a breathtaking conclusion that celebrates mothers and daughters, sisters and brothers, and anyone who has ever been in love. <laughs> is how it describes it. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I don't know that the practical magic book, um, that one is always popular this time of year. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, 
and a lot of people don't know that it is like a series. Like there yeah, are is there one called there. Magic Lessons? There's Magic Lessons and I forget what. Alice Hoffman is someone who's writing. Her writing is great. Sometimes I like the story. Sometimes I don't. It I, I go mm -hmm. back and forth with her. Yeah. Um, and like I have one friend who loves her books, loves, loves, loves everything she writes. As soon as something comes out, she's got it on hold. But um with her, it's it's hit and miss. So mm -hmm. okay. Um I'm gonna do the I've not read this one. But it's called This Thing Between Us. The author is Gus Marino. It comes out next week. Um, and this is a horror book um, that is kind of based on the premise of a an evil Alexa, <laughs> uh, like an evil household assistant, um, the world's most advanced smart speaker. Um, but they get it. This couple gets one, and then strange occurrences start happening, cold spots, scratching in the walls, and then packages start showing up, including who ordered industrial lie? Um, there's eerie music at odd hours, uh, projecting lights, and then the wife dies. And so um, the husband, um, you know, trying to cope with that, he moves out far away from the city. Um, and apparently he cannot get away from whatever evil has been unleashed by this world's most advanced smart speaker. That sounds very creepy. And it's another reason I do not ever want one of those in my home. Right. There's many reasons. I'm already, I know I'm already tracked enough. So what would it really matter, I suppose? But no, I'm not interested either. Industrial lie. Big oof, Andrea says. <laughs> yes, yeah. because um, that's, Used for getting rid of bodies, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one that's on my list that's spooky is um, the death of Jane Lawrence. I printed out the cover of that because it's a fun cover. Yes. I'll show it Jane while you talk. Starling is is the is the author. Yes. Ooh, the magic hands. Yes. Um, <laughs> she has done the calculations. She's very practical and decides that a marriage. Of of convenience is what's best for her mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so that she can, you know, remain independent and do meaningful work. And she decides that this gentleman, uh, Dr. Augustine Lawrence, is who she should marry. And he agrees. Mm -hmm. and she has only one condition that she never, ever visit Lindridge Hall. That's the crumbling family manor outside of town. Mm -hmm. And she's like, sure, I don't need to go there. But um, something happens on their wedding night and she ends up there. And um, yes, uh, she, uh, and her, her husband is gone. And in his place is this terrified, paranoid man who can't tell reality from nightmare. Um, and and he thinks Jane is an apparition, and then like, uh, so it's like it, it gets scary and spooky at that point, and um, it's it's described as unsettling, atmospheric, and downright brutal at times. It will continue to haunt, haunt you long after you've finished reading it. So if you're in the mood for spooky. This sounds like yeah. it's it's a good one. So and that, it's like a gothic. Yes, very direct. Uh, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's like after um, post-war England, but like a a a, a different parallel like a alternate. alternate. Yes, yes alternate mm -hmm. post-war yeah. England time okay. frame. So yes, it's very sounds very interesting. It's yeah, very, it's very atmospheric. Yeah. Um. I want to, I'll mention the book Reprieve by James Han Matson. It came out this week as well. Um, I think I mentioned it once before because I'd started reading it, um, but I finished reading it. Uh, and it is about four contestants who make it to the final cell of Quigley House, which is a full contact escape, haunted escape room. Um, so 
you know, you got to make it through the whole escape room. And if you do, um, you win this mon monetary prize, but you're like attacked and, and you have to like fight through disgusting stuff. And it's, like I said, full contact. Um, and only one group has ever made it through. And these four contestants are going to be the next one. But before they can complete the challenge, a man breaks into the cell and kills one of the contestants. And so much of the book is just the backstories of those four contestants broken up by occasional chapters of them making it through each room of the haunted escape room. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked I liked those four backstories. I liked that. For some reason, the escape room portion, I just wasn't as much of a fan of. And I think I thought it was going to be scarier than it was. And it like wasn't really scary because especially... I don't know. It's a full contact escape room, but they also can't like kill you. So I wasn't sure what you were really supposed to be afraid of. You just got to battle your way through, right? Um, like so what if something is dead. falls from the ceiling on you and I, you, I don't know. So, um, but I've heard really good things about it. It seemed like a lot of people liked it because, um, you know, you just have to kind of, they talk about um, a series of, of toxic entanglements and uh, the one woman's root uprooted from her home after the loss of her father. Each character's journey unfurls and overlaps, deceits and misunderstandings, obsession and prejudice, and all those things I thought were interesting. For some reason, the escape room part kind of lost me, but they say it's a tension, psychological tension of classical horror mixed with searing social criticism. So I feel like um, it could probably appeal to a variety of people because it is not just a straightforward horror thing, which is kind of what I thought it was going to be. Um, and I think that's why I was slightly disappointed because I thought it was something else, but I think it could have a lot wider appeal than that. So it's called Reprieve and the author is James Han Matson, and we will put all these up. Yes. Yes. We will post them um, probably this afternoon after I merge our lists. Um, Sounds good. I, there's, there's, I wanted I don't really know what, what time frame it's set in. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like time of year, but the cover looks very spooky to me. And <laughs> it's called um, These Silent Woods by mm -hmm. Kimmy, Kimmy Cunningham Grant. There's a gentleman, he lives in the woods with his daughter. Um, no electricity, no family. They they're only have like two people that they're connected to. There's like this... Um, they're in the northern Appalachian woods. There's uh, a, like an a old hermit that they occasionally talk to. And um, Jake, this Cooper's, the dad's friend, Jake, he shows up every winter to bring them supplies. Well, this winter he didn't show up. And then things like mm -hmm. someone stumbles upon them and like... Mm -hmm just you know and um like why are they there why is he hiding in the woods with his daughter um uh you know like that at least in the descriptions hasn't been explained so i'm very yeah. curious and the daughter is pushing back against this life of isolation um so there's that struggle as well and it just what's going on in the woods it's yeah it's one of those it's, it, it's right like, it's, like it's gonna be it's gonna be at least intense if not yes intense. Yes, that's when you're talking about being alone in the woods. This is not I can't, I can't emphasize enough. This is not a suspense or horror situation, but it reminded me of another book on my list called The Memoirs of Stockholm Sven. It's fiction. It's not actually a memoir. Uh, the author is Nathaniel Ian Miller. It comes out at the end of this month, October. Um, in 1916, Sven Ormsen leaves a restless life in Stockholm to seek adventure in Svalbard, an Arctic archipelago where darkness reigns four months of the year. Um, but his time as a miner ends when an avalanche nearly kills him, leaving him disfigured. So he flees further to an uninhabited fjord. In the company of his loyal dog, he builds a hut and lives alone, testing himself against the elements. Um, and then he is befriended by an unlikely visitor who kind of helps cure some of his loneliness, sparking a chain of surprising events that brings Sven into a family of fellow cast-offs and determines the course of the rest of his life. And it kind of made me think about like a Frederick Bachman type of book where there might be like a cast of unlikely characters or quirky characters, um, especially also just the, there's also an appeal in that Nordic, barrenness and, and you said the you know, the cast offs and you know where my mind went where 
the island of misfit toys oh. in, <laughs> in the Rudolph. Well, there you go. Yes, we so have got these people up in the Arctic in their cast off. So I immediately imagine the island of misfit. A read a like slash watch a like. So the memoirs of Stockholm Sven, I can picture that having a, an audience as well. Comes out at the end of this month. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I think I've covered most of what I was planning on talking about. Okay. I think there are a couple on here that I haven't gotten to, but I think we've used our whole hour. Alice. We have, and they'll all be online um, in our document that we yes, put up. get that posted <laughs> soon, I promise. Better, well, you do better than I do. That's why I went for it. That's why, like, when it was done, I was so excited to send it. I sent it without sending it. Um, <laughs> trying to think of this. sent the wrong one, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, if there's anything that I really wanted to hit on and didn't. Um, you guys have probably seen this, but there was last month a new Paula Hawkins, A Slow Fire Burning. Um, she's the author of Girl on the Train um, and some other things that people tend to like. And the audiobook version of that is not narrated by Ro Rosamund Pike, who was in Gone Girl. And so that kind of got a lot of attention with her as a narrator. Um, so that's something to watch for. Tamron Hall, um, she's, you know Tamron, she's a reporter on the news. Mm -hmm. um, she has another book coming out, um, As the Wicked Watch. Okay. It looks like it's gonna be the first in the series um, with Jordan Manning. She's this TV crime reporter. She seems like okay. she's gonna be like a recurring character. Um, she She's a TV crime reporter, but she also has like, a background in forensics or something. Sure. That sounds um, convenient. Yes. And her signature, she's always first to arrive on scene in stylish, impractical heels. But um, so she reports on all these these murders. And then um, there's one that like she just can't shake and she starts investigating and Someone's hiding in plain sight. It looks like there's a, a serial killer. I'm, I'm guessing it's a serial killer. I don't know, but it's the first in a series, and it looks nice. like it's gonna be good. Well, that's good. And then I will. I mean, there's so many more, but I'll just leave with this one because <laughs> I want on my list. I kind of tried to break it into some genres, and one of the genres was called fiction with a bit of magic because. I couldn't call, I didn't really want to call it fantasy because it's not, but it, I like, broke it out from the regular fiction that includes like, you know, the Lincoln Highway and stuff. It's more straightforward. And this one, I just, I did print out the cover because I thought it was cool. It's called The Cat Who Saves Who Saved Books. And I thought people might enjoy that cover. And it's one of those ones where I couldn't even quite explain. It's unclear what happens, but basically a high school student um, and a talking cat named Tiger are on a mission and an amazing journey where they enter different mazes to set books free. They have to liberate lonely books from their neglectful owners, unloved and unread books, which I am feeling attacked when they talk about that because I have a lot of unread books. They're not unloved though, they're just unread. Um, and so they meet a man who leaves books to perish on a bookshelf, an unwitting book torturer who cuts pages of books into snippets to help people speed read, and then a publishing drone who only wants to create bestsellers. And then their adventures culminate in one final unforgettable challenge. The last maze uh, that awaits them leads them down a realm only the bravest dare enter. So I know that books about books and books about reading are very popular and this cover is very fun. So the cat who saved books. <laughs> For what it's worth, it comes out, but that actually comes out in December. It's not out yet. Um, um, I'm going to talk about one more. You talked about a cover. This cover is super creepy. I didn't print it out, so you'll have to look it up yourself. Um, nothing but black and I dark. printed that one out. I have Thank it here because Allison. it's really gross. Thank you. It's Isn't that the creepy. creepiest? Hold on. Let me get it straightened. Oh, my gosh. I can't do it. Okay. There we go. Yes. It's like super creepy, that cover. Um Paul Cassandra is the author. It's It says, a gorgeously creepy haunted ta house tale steeped in Japanese folklore and full of devastating twists. So it's, it's uh, 
Yes. It yeah. Just, it looks creepy, like creepy, it. creepy. So if that's your thing, especially this time of year, that's the book for you. Yeah. Yeah. If you celebrate spooky season by reading spooky books, there are more probably on each of our lists. Yes. <laughs> so. Well, it was so nice to with you and with everyone mm -hmm. out there. <laughs> yes. I hope we can do this again and sit with some type of semi-regularity. Um, mm -hmm. Let us know what you thought about it and what you think about the 12 o'clock time slot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying something new. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. We're so happy to see you and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.